Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Werko Damena Yifru. I am a program officer for biosafety policy and legal affairs at the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is based in Montreal. Today, it's my honor to make this brief presentation to you as regards one of the international treaties that was adopted by governments at a biodiversity conference that was held in Nagoya, Japan in October last year. The purpose of this presentation is to introduce to you the objective, content, and value of this international treaty. We in the Secretariat believe that you can play a critical role in shaping up national debates and building consensus that could lead to a rapid signature and ratification of this international treaty by your respective governments. With that, let me now proceed to my presentation using the few slides that I have uh, as follows. In June 1992, Two historic international environmental agreements were signed in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. These agreements were the Convention on Biological Diversity and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. There was unprecedented support to those treaties around the world, including support by legislative bodies, which led to the rapid entry into force of the treaties. Today, both treaties enjoy near universal membership. The Convention on Biological Diversity represents a global commitment to the conservation of biological diversity, the sustainable use of the components of biological diversity, and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the use of genetic resources. Following the entry into force of the Convention on Biological Diversity in December 1993, parties continued their debate about a number of issues that were not concluded at the time of adopting the Convention. One of these issues was related to managing and regulating the potential adverse impacts of the introduction of genetically modified organisms on the environment. Discussions continued on whether there was a need for an international legal framework that specifically regulates the safe cross-border transfer and handling of these organisms. Eventually, it was agreed to have formal negotiations on a biosafety protocol. The negotiations started in July 1996 in Aarhus, Denmark. After nearly five years of intense negotiations, an international treaty known as the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety was adopted in January 2000 by the parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity. The adoption of the biosafety protocol was hailed as a significant step in reconciling environmental safety concerns on the one hand and trade or development needs on the other related to modern biotechnology. Again, like its parent treaty, the biosafety protocol received broad and swift support from governments and legislators around the world. That favorable situation led to the protocol's entry into force in September 2003, exactly a year after the Johannesburg World Summit on Sustainable Development and 10 years after the entry into force of the Convention on Biological Diversity. There were some contentious issues that the negotiators of the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety were not able to agree on and finalize at the time of adopting the protocol. They, however, agreed to examine them after the adoption and subsequent entry into force of the protocol. One of these issues was the issue of liability and redress. Liability is an obligation that a law attaches to a person to provide compensation or to take redress measures for damage resulting from an action for which that person is deemed to be responsible. At their first meeting held in February 2004, parties to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety decided to embark on negotiations to elaborate international rules in the field of liability and redress for damage that may result from living modified organisms, which are commonly known as genetically modified organisms. These negotiations took place since and came to the, a conclusion in October 2010. Once again, a new treaty emerged 10 years after the adoption of the Biosafety Protocol, a treaty known as the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol 
on liability and redress was adopted on 15 October 2010 by the fifth meeting of the parties to the Cartena Protocol on Biosafety held in Nagoya, Japan. This slide shows the objective of the supplementary protocol. The objective of the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol is to contribute to the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity by providing rules and procedures on liability and redress. Providing rules and procedures on liability and redress is a means to achieve the overarching objective of conserving and sustainably utilizing biological diversity, which is the central objective of the two parent treaties, namely the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Scope. The supplementary protocol on liability and address applies to damage to biodiversity resulting from living modified organisms that a country has imported for planting or breeding purposes or for use in a contained facility such as uh, in research, in laboratories, or for direct consumption as food or feed or for further processing or living modified organisms that enters into a country illegally or accidentally or unintentionally. Damage to biological diversity resulting from living modified organisms may be manifested in various ways. Damage to biodiversity has to be measurable or observable and significant, such as causing long-term effects or permanent change in order to trigger response action under the supplementary protocol. The main focus of the supplementary protocol is to prompt parties and their competent authorities to provide for response measures in the event of damage from living modified organisms. Parties must, when damage occurs, require the appropriate operator to immediately inform the competent authority to evaluate the damage and to take appropriate response measures. Depending on circumstances where the operator fails to take response measures, the competent authorities themselves may need to take such measures and recover from the operator costs and expenses incurred in relation to the implementation of response measures. What are response measures? The supplementary protocol defines response measures as reasonable actions to prevent or avoid damage and to restore biological diversity. The supplementary protocol requires parties to provide in their domestic law for rules and procedures that address damage to biodiversity. This requirement does not necessarily entail the enactment of a new law. It can be fulfilled by applying existing domestic law, including general rules and procedures on civil liability. The supplementary protocol is believed to contribute to the prevention or mitigation of damage to biodiversity. and to human health. In the event something goes wrong and biodiversity suffers damage, appropriate redress or response measures need to be undertaken. That's what this new treaty asks government to put in place. It's expected to create an incentive to operators to take all cautionary measures necessary to ensure safety in the development and handling of living modified organisms. Parties to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety have already undertaken an obligation to ensure that the development, handling, transport, use, transfer and release of any living modified organisms are undertaken in a manner that prevents or reduces the risks to biological diversity, taking also into account risks to human health. The supplementary protocol is supposed to be an additional tool in fulfilling this commitment. 
Furthermore, the supplementary protocol on liability and address is expected to create further confidence and an enabling environment for the environmentally sound application of modern biotechnology. In their decision, adopting the supplementary protocol, parties to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety have recognized the need for capacity building measures with a view to assisting developing countries to develop and or implement their domestic laws that have relevance to the implementation of the new treaty. In this regard, the ratification and entry into force of the supplementary protocol will present another opportunity for both developed and developing country parties to forge further cooperation in building capacities that are necessary to support the safe development and use of modern biotechnology. The supplementary protocol provides for options that enable parties to apply in the implementation of the requirements of the treaty, their existing domestic law, including general rules and procedures on civil liability, or apply or develop civil liability rules and procedures specific to damage resulting from living modified organisms. It is believed that such option provides flexibility and space for the various approaches that countries have adopted or prefer to adopt in the area of liability and redress at a domestic level. It's also believed that signing and subsequently ratifying or acceding to the supplementary protocol would demonstrate further commitment to the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. Let me come to the uh, slide which is showing the treaty process. The Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol was opened for signature on 7 March 2011 at the United Nations headquarters in New York. It remains open for signature until 6 March next year, 2012. Parties to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety are called upon to sign and subsequently ratify, accept or approve the supplementary protocol expeditiously. Those that are not parties to the protocol on biosafety yet are also encouraged to ratify or accede to both the protocol and its supplementary protocol. The Secretariat in Montreal is always at your disposal to answer any questions. The treaty section of the United Nations in New York is also available to address any queries concerning signature or ratification of this international treaty. Finally, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you'll join us in spreading the words about this international treaty and encouraging countries and their respective governments to sign and ratify it so that it will enter into force as soon as possible and be part of international law. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.